this video, I will be reviewing the one-sided z-test. I'll be introducing the two-sided z-test and also show you how the calculator can make your life a little bit more comfortable on that third step. So pause the video if you need to read the question and here we go. Uh, in less than 10 minutes is my goal. So uh, in this question it says that the average teen um, has 150 followers. Whenever you're given an average, ask yourself, is that coming from the population or a sample? This one is coming from the population. It says that it's known that the standard deviation is 40 followers. Again, ask yourself that question. Is that standard deviation coming from the population or from a sample? And that's coming from a population as well. Uh, this is where the hypothesis test takes off from this, um, these sentences here. You believe that this average, the average that you're told, is too small. So you get a simple random sample or a random sample of 60 students at Sweet Home High School and find that its average is 175. So you're right, you, at least in terms of what you believe. You believe that this average is too small. You got something that was 25 followers more. The question is, is that that much of a difference, a 25 um, follower difference? Is that a big enough difference to think that it's significant? And you might even establish, and you should think about that yourself right now, do you think that it's very far off from where it started off? Keeping in mind the standard deviation is 40, you might think, yeah, that's probably well above where it should be if this is true. So this is where a hypothesis test takes shape. Um, we're told that the average was 150 followers, and we believe that that average is too small. We believe that the actual average should be higher than 150. When you're doing a hypothesis test, these numbers should always match, and it should always uh, be discussing the average from the population, never the average from the sample. In the hypothesis test, these numbers always represent numbers coming from the population. The number that we're told is true, and then the alternative is what we think might be true. Uh, to perform uh, this test and communicate it perfectly, you're going to name the test. We're going to be using a z-test because the standard deviation is coming from the population. We're going to check our um, conditions. Is it a simple random sample? It says it's random. Is the sample size big enough? And then the third thing to do in the second step is to set your significance level. They did tell us to use 5%. Uh, when it comes to a calculation, taking all this information and turning these four numbers into just a single number is one of the reasons why we create a z-score, taking all four of these numbers and creating one single number out of it. So in this question they're telling me that the average is supposed to be 150, but I got 175, which brings our z-score to about 4.8. Then we can take that z-score and place it onto a standard normal curve to see or visualize how rare it actually is. So a standard normal curve has 0 as the average, and the standard deviation is 1. It's a very simple curve and very easy to locate our z-scores. So for this particular case, we are very far in the outskirts here with our z-score being 4.8. When it comes to making a decision about shading and finding the p-value or finding out how rare our curve is, uh, there's a tip here, a little graphic for Remember, it, remember always that the inequality in the ha will give you the direction in terms of the shading. So this is a greater than. Let's put this reminder off to the side. Since it's greater than, we're going to shade to the right. So our p-value becomes this microscopic amount of probability. To figure that out on the calculator, we're going to use normal CDF. To figure out how rare our sample is, how rare would it be, to get a z-score of 4.8 or worse using the average of 0 and a standard deviation of 1 since we're on that standard curve 
and you end up getting a very, very small probability. It's so small, it's written in scientific notation, 6 times 10 to the negative 7. So the p-value is very small, 0 0.00006. That brings us to our final step. Once we have our p-value, compare the p-value to the significance level. The p-value is very, very low, much lower than 5%. So the p-value is less than the significance level. So we'll write the p-value is low, reject the hoe, which means we believe that the alternative is probably correct, that the true average is actually greater than 150. All right, so um, let's talk about using the graphing calculator to speed things up a little bit in step number three. You can press on the graphing calculator or the graphing calculator app, the stat button, slide to the word calculate, and enter in some information uh, into the screen that's there. So just as I did here, um, pointing this out, the, the null hypothesis was 150 followers. The standard deviation from the population was 40. Our sample average was 175, and there were 60 um, students that were asked, or 60 teenagers. If you're using the graphing calculator app, be sure to press enter every single time you type in another number, or it will not update the z-score and the p-value, which you can see it completely agrees with the score, the numbers we got by our hand calculations. Um, to help you see that that probability is so very small, I actually used the screen again on the iPad and zoomed in on that normal curve to illustrate just how rare that probability actually is. And if you can see how I zoomed in with my iPad, I got that I shrunk that y-axis down or expanded that y-axis uh, by quite a bit so that I could see that teeny bit of probability here and this is actually part of the normal curve that even leaves the screen because of the way that I zoomed in. So that brings us to the last little bit and it's just a little bit too. Um, what is a two-sided test and what's that all about? So um, suppose that last paragraph was changed to the following it was changed from saying that we believe that the average t was too small into saying that we believe that we do not believe that it's 150 followers. So it does not say which direction we believe that the true average would lie. We just don't think it's 150. If everything else remained exactly the same, and it does, and if just the wording is changed very slightly, you would get, in this case, a two-sided z-test. Everything would remain the same except for the items that I'm highlighting here, and I'll do this in red. So instead of it being greater than, it would be not equal to. Everything else is staying the same. It's still a z-test. The z-score is exactly the same, um, but when we get to the graphing is where it gets a little bit different. So instead of only shading in one direction, we're going to have to consider a miss to the left just as likely as a miss to the right. What this ends up doing to our p-value is it gives us twice as much shading. So even though the z-score came out to be 4.8 in a two-sided test, we also have to consider negative 4.8 just as likely as positive 4.8 for a z-score. And you're going to be shading to the left and to the right. Remember my little graphic here. It even looks like me. Remember that the inequality in the ha gives the direction of the shading. So if the ha said greater than, which it did originally, we're shading to the right. If the ha said less than, we would shade to the left. In this two-sided test, the ha says not equal to, so we shade to the left and to the right. The only other impact that has on this particular question is on the p-value. We're going to have twice as much probability, so you're going to take that number and double it. 
which ends up being about 1.2 times 10 to the negative 6, which is still a very, very small amount of probability. So let's just go on to the fourth step then. It would be exactly the same conclusion here. Even though we've doubled the probability, our probability is still very, very low. And we're still going to have the same conclusion of rejecting the home. Well, I almost made my 10-minute goal. Um, there's, I guess, one more graphic to show you is that you can actually do this two-sided test on the graphing calculator as well. And um, so it's still the same commands to get there, pressing stat and tests. Use the test menu, typing in the information, but changing the um, decision here by selecting not equal to. And that will give you the p-value. And actually, by zooming in, you can see that the, the, the um, graphing calculator app has shaded on both sides to the left and to the right.